Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. I'm just getting myself ready. And just let us know where you're tuning in from. It's fun to see where we all are and painting. So I'm just going to, I think that the comments might be disabled on my screen right now. So I'm just checking on my other device, but I'm using again, primary colors. That's yellow, blue, red, black, and white as well. They're acrylic and step-by-step um, -step to how to do this painting. This will definitely be on our YouTube channel um, afterwards, not right after, probably a few days or something, but you can rewatch it on our Facebook page, no problem. I'm just getting my water. my water. Welcome guys. Thanks Nasli. From Pakistan, Cornwall, Idaho, all over the place. Nice to see everyone. Lauderdale, Florida. And then local Oshawa. Cool. Yes, um, we're already thinking about fall just a little bit. So my name is Liesl. And um, I, I know some of you have painted with me before. It's nice to see familiar names. So we can get started very shortly. It's just four o'clock now, so we'll give people a few minutes before we start. Again, grab your paints. Uh, the primary color is black and white. I need blue. and a napkin or a paper towel. Hi, Mary Dale. Oh, sorry, I'm very quiet. I'm just, I guess it's because of my new device. I have to speak a lot louder. Where's my old device? I didn't have to speak so loud. And hopefully that's better. So I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas and it's going to be portrait style. This painting is, I think it's very easy for uh, beginners because it's just um, different colors, like nice warm fall colors in the water up and then uh, we're not doing any random weird strokes. We're just doing nice long strokes back and forth. A little bit of blending, but not too much, not necessary. Um, and the birch trees are pretty easy and not hard to do. Okay, so like I said, um, you can watch this later. You can also pause or I don't think you can pause. Yeah, you can pause. On this live video and you can trace back so if you're behind just do that and then we can um, we don't have to wait so long if some people are ahead or if you want to take your time that's fine you can rewatch it afterwards so let's get started on this first you're going to take your very large brush and I'll just show you the brushes I'll be 
picking from. I might not use all of them, but these are some examples of what you could use. I have a couple different detailed brushes, so one's smaller than the other, but they're still pretty good. And I have a nice large flat, also a filbert, which is also another flat but more round. And then I have a round brush in general. So kind of medium. So those are my brushes. And I'm going to take this large one, dip it in my water. And you're just going to quickly wet the canvas. That's it. I'll move this to the side so I can paint on it. All right. First color that we want to start with is just some light blue at the top of our sky. So that's drying and then we can have, um, have it mixed and blend with our other colors. And we don't want to mix blue with too much of our yellows. It kind of makes a lot of green. So I'm going to take some blue on my brush, put it to the side, and maybe right here, and then take a nice scoop of white, and you get a nice lighter sky blue. You can also add just more blue if it's too light for you, or you want to add more white because it's too dark. And I'm going to go right around here as where I'm going to stop. So everything else is just going to be pretty much blue from that line upwards. And I'm trying to read comments as I'm painting just in case you have questions. So let me know if there's any questions. And you can always give me or you can hit the like, like button whenever you're done. And I know when we're done a step. Again, if you're behind and you're just pausing and rewinding, that's okay. So you can see nice long strokes with the flat side of my brush. Taking more paint. And this should be pretty good for a good fill. So what I like to do after that is, since we have to blend it into our yellows, oranges, and then reds, you're gonna wash it off really well after. Wash that off. And then I'm going to take just a little dip of my white. Start right at the blue line where you ended it and just drag it down a little bit so it gets a little bit lighter. And then it's easier to blend into your yellow, um, your golden yellow, your light orange. So you'll see just on that top part where it goes from blue to light yellow orange, that's how we're gonna blend it. Much lighter blue. So again, that was just washed off a uh, brush, dip it in white, and then just go along the very bottom and just make a very light blue streak. From California, hi Catherine. So I just washed this off again and I'm drying it off. For the next part, we can skip this section for a minute because again, we want to dry. We don't want to make too, many, or too much green into our sky. And uh, it's, I'll just lift this up again so we can see. So we want to start doing this part here by the grass and then we'll come back and fill the rest of our sky. So 
So on my large brush, again, I haven't changed it. I am going to take a nice light yellow. So that was just yellow and some white. I actually have yellow and white kind of next to each other. Um, taking some white here, mixing it, getting a nice sunshine, bright yellow. That's okay, Val, yeah, you can watch it later. And I like to mark off my horizon line. So I'm gonna go about halfway, maybe just a little bit lower for my horizon line. So put that there. And then what I do afterwards is I just grab more of my really bright yellow. If you want to add more white because it's not light enough, you want it lighter, you can do it. I'm just going to go upwards. So I'm going to drag this paint, again, same flat side of the brush, back and forth, and do, I think if you're doing a 16 by 20 canvas like me, I think a couple inches up is good. Maybe a little bit more because you can blend orange over top of your yellow really well. So it's going to blend over top just a little bit. So that's why you want to do a little bit more than you want to. There we go. Ooh, someone's painting, Penny, you're painting at your cottage. Great. I will be doing that when I go to mine in a I think a week or two. So I've washed this off again. And whoever's keeping up with me, that's amazing. <laughs> Maybe you've painted with me before a lot or you're just um, a regular painter. Tiffany, awesome, thank you. Uh, so I washed this off and now I am starting to do a golden kind of light orange color. So that is mixing in your same light yellow spot right here. So a bit more yellow because you want to get a bit more of that paint. And then see, I'm just taking a small little dip of red and it gets very kind of yellowy cheesy color. You can add more yellow if it's too red, but it, that's, that's a nice color, more, a little bit more white and maybe just a touch more red. I'm just adjusting to um, not too much red. You gotta be careful. Otherwise it turns very pink, um, peachy color. So this is good. I'm gonna start with that. And then see how it's nice and much warmer than this one. It looks like compared to that, it's like a light orange, but it's kind of looks like a golden yellow color. So I just, starting here and then you can go right over top of your previous yellow just see it blends super well very well and now i'm just starting to go upwards so again this color right here so if i'm sorry if i'm blocking for a minute just more yellow and red, much more yellow, very, just a dot of red. And if you add less white, it, see how it turns even darker golden, like cheesy color. I, I think that's cool, I'm gonna use that. And then a little touch of my water so it helps spread the paint. And yeah, this is good. I'm just going to fill that up to my blue line and hopefully your blue is dry by now. Um, I'm going to show you how to mix it, but go right up to it. Make sure your blue is dry before you mix it in with the blue and I'm going to show you before, beforehand. Uh, yeah, Wendy, um, thanks for calling out my palette. 
it's actually not that heavy, but it's getting there because there's lots of paint on there. It's like a heaping pile of paint. This is called Start Acrylic Paint. That's what we use. You don't have to buy it by the jug like that. Um, but yeah, just uh, Start Acrylic Paint. It's good for beginner paint and it's, um, it's actually pretty good quality as well, even if you're um, not even your more advanced painter, it's still good. But Rio Tech is a really good brand, as well as going up to Sears, they have good stuff too. And the reason it's so good is because it's not as, um, it's a bit more, it has more thickness to it. It doesn't come off as uh, translucent or anything. It's basically more opaque when you put it on the canvas. Okay, so when I blend up into here, that's when I take, with that same color we were just using, some white. You don't have to wash off your brush. So I dipped it in white. And then I go right up into, lightly press into your blue. The more you go over your blue, the more it turns green. So now I'm gonna stop touching it because it's, see how it's gonna slightly turn green? I actually um, kind of cover that up with some clouds and stuff. And Wendy, that's okay. You can rewatch it here on Facebook or you can just wait till we put it on YouTube. It doesn't matter. It'll be up forever. We've decided to just keep everything up forever because we have a YouTube channel and we can declutter our Facebook with all our free events because it gets confusing with where everything is. That's why. And we actually are thinking of um, using Twitch as well for streaming because Facebook is unreliable, as you guys probably know already from past experience. Yeah, and Sierra, I just said it uh, stays up forever. Okay, so I have that all filled in. And now we're going to basically just do our water before we do the clouds, because we want all of this to dry before we do clouds. Now, if we go back to the water, you'll see that it goes from a nice golden color down to a deep red, orangey color. It looks very red, but I did add a touch of yellow in it so it doesn't turn too pink. I'm not a big fan of pink. Sorry, I just, I like it more warmer than cooler. So I'm going to again go back to my golden color and that is just the same exact color we were just using. So yellow with a touch of red, whoops, gotta be careful with how much red you take, and some white to lighten it up. So go right underneath this um, horizon line, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap of just white and you can still tell the difference between your light yellow and this color so you know where your horizon is at all times. I'm just going to leave a bit of a, if you went into it that's fine, you can just put it, like make it white later, it's just you might have to do another extra coat of it, that's all. I know, I, I've never heard of Twitch until this year, to be very honest, but apparently it's a good streaming site with good quality, whereas Facebook is not so great. So I'm just grabbing more of that. I had to mix a bit more, and I'm just going to start going across. I know that it seems weird, but this little gap, if it's white it makes it easier to keep it white than having to go over it and make it white for your reflection from the the sun all over again this would work uh, well with watercolor a lot of paintings could
Taylor, are you referring to Twitch as a good quality? Because if so, then yes, I agree. Okay, so as you can see, I left a weird blob of just white. It's not perfect. It, I meant to make it a bit whiter at the top. That's okay. Um, I can just go over and make it white. It's going to have a reflection from the sun in the water starting off pretty wide and then narrowing down towards the bottom. So kind of like a triangle shape. Yeah, Taylor. Okay, so that's what I thought you meant. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a bit more yellow because I ran out of some yellow here because we're going to be going into nice darker oranges and some red orange for the rest of here. So probably on our next event, we'll do a Twitch as well. Don't worry, there's nothing changing on your end. You can choose to stay on Facebook and watch us or just go to the Twitch um, link. That's, don't be confused. Okay, to can continue on down, we're going to start adding a lot more red because I like the kind of burning sunset look or just nice red colors in the sky. So I'm taking some more red, as you can see, mixing with my yellow. And it's just going to get a lot more orange. Oops. I'm just spreading it around because there's too much red, but start off a bit lighter. And that was with a little bit of white. There's white next to it. So if you didn't add any white, just add um, some white to it to lighten it up. If you add too much white, again, it will be too bright. You want it to start getting a lot darker. So I'm going to start below. I'm starting below this line. Okay, go all the way across. And see, I'm just dragging it up into my yellow a bit to help blend it. And just lightly press into your golden color, lightly, so it doesn't come off too strong. It just has like more of a subtle blend and it's easy to blend if you did too much you can just go back to your yellow and white and try to soften that up that area up so I'm going to do the other side see how it's nicely blended press a lot lighter maybe wipe off some of your paint and then just blend it up into your golden color. It just has like a soft blend to it. Makes it look like it's not so choppy. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some more paint. I'm gonna go to the other side and do this. So use the thin side of your brush and just lightly go back and forth. Press very light into your yellow to blend it a bit more. And then as you go down, just press hard and let it sit there on the canvas because we're going to keep going darker and darker. So you can see I still have a lot of canvas left. There's going to be a big, there's going to be a nice grass patch right here. So we're going to go very red right now. And I'm washing this off again. Okay, so I'm just seeing, um, uh, yeah, Mary, it does actually look like that. I think it, I think it would be. Uh, considered a dark coral. Yeah, if you guys are having this, this is why I was saying we should go to Twitch is because um, streaming is very reliable. I'm just getting more yellow. Uh, um, it's very reliable on Twitch. And if you're having 
issues with the streaming and seeing me as maybe frozen, it won't do that on Twitch. At least I haven't heard anything like that. Okay. So as we get really dark with the red, I am just going to be taking some yellow, maybe put that next to my red, and then just drag in the red, no white. Take a bit more yellow, and you'll see that it actually turns compared to my red there. See how it's just more red-orange, and it still looks red, whereas this is more pink-red. I don't know if you guys noticed that, or maybe you just don't care. You can just use plain red, but I prefer it, again, warmer, so adding a bit more yellow. So I think I want it to be right at the bottom. See that? It looks like a nice, vibrant, true red instead of pink. Again, I'm starting at the bottom like before. And just going to do the same thing, streak it up, use the thinner side of your brush right on the tip, and just streak it up lightly, press lighter. Help blend that right over top of that darker orange, kind of look like coral color. And put as much as you want of this red if you want to do a lot because I did a lot in my painting I had about this much going on you can just lightly streak it up get some more going towards the top don't press as hard and you'll get more of a transparent look and you can still see some of the light orange in the background and it's blended also Okay, so I just washed this off. Um, Tammy, if you have tempura paint, tempura, I said it like it as if we're at a sushi restaurant, tempura, um, uh, you know, I don't use it because I honestly don't think that it's the best quality, but you can use it, yes. Do I recommend using it? No, because it's uh, it's very, very watered down, I think, and it's not the same as acrylic paint, and it won't get the same effect. Try it out. Uh, you can show me how it, how it looks after. So I've washed off my brush, and before we start the clouds, at the very bottom, I do take some blue, just plain primary blue on my brush, or you can take phthalo blue. And I'm gonna start at the very bottom and just get a little stripe of this blue for before we get into our uh, grass patch. I just have a little bit there because there's blue at the top here, so I want to make it look like there is some blue in the water. Try to I'm going to try and make it a little bit more even. There. So washing this off. And we'll come back to that afterwards. Um, we can blend that afterwards. I don't want to do it now because I don't want to mix blue and some orange together. That's not a good color in the water to have. I am taking this brush, putting it to the side, and I'm going to take um, a bit of a smaller brush bit more detailed but not so detailed if that if you don't have something uh, like that you can use something like this you just don't want it super fine detail because you can't do the clouds as well as if you have a bit of more you know brush hairs basically on your on your brush so I'll show you the um, the sky again you'll notice that there's a lot of red kind of red orange clouds going throughout they're much smaller on the bottom and then they get a little bit longer and kind of bigger towards the top. 
that's what we're doing. First, I'm going to just make a white circle for the sun. So just plain white. Pick a spot. I'm going to do right here because I know my reflection's here. So I'm going to try to keep that right in the same centered area. It's probably as, as big as a toonie. Do a second coat afterwards if it's not white enough for you, but wait for it to dry first. Um, so, <clears throat> Linda, what kind of paint are you using? And yeah, if you are using too much water, it'll make it more look like more watercolor diluted paint. Now to make our clouds, I'm going to stick with my red theme because I have a lot of red in the water. So I want to make sure I'm reflecting that red color. And again, I'm just going to take some yellow. You can mix it over top of previous colors. I'm just going to mix in the same spot that I had my previous orange. More yellow, so now it looks golden, but again, I want it to be more red. So I'm just going to take a lot more red, make it very red looking. And no white, maybe a bit more red. <laughs> okay, so that's good. I'm just twirling my brush so I can wipe off some of the paint so it's not fully loaded. See that? Um, yeah, sorry guys, if you don't know what a toonie is, I apologize, I'm Canadian, but the Canadians know what a toonie is. It's um, basically a coin or a $2 coin. That probably gave you a laugh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me know if that gave you a chuckle. It gave me quite the chuckle. I forgot that um, you guys don't know what toonies are. So. To start with my small clouds, I'm just going to start with like a couple dots and just make a little bit of a line. I like my clouds to be very linear and trail away. So remember, this is my sky. My water starts right about here. Um. Jackie, a dime for us is super small. It's uh, laughable. So I did a, a like a, a line for the cloud. You know what? Next event I do, I'm going to actually show you what a toonie looks like. This will be fun. Um, and I'm going to make another cloud. So I'm going to start going upwards. Again, I'm just going to start with, you can start with a line. I'm going to turn this a little bit so I don't go too wobbly. And once you make a line, you can just dab over it. Do, to keep it nice and thin on the ends. And I just dab and make more of a heap pile of fluffiness, dabbing, sponging on. To make it look like a very thin and a little bit of height and then thin again cloud. So if you've done your second coat on your on your sun, maybe you just left it, make sure you do that first before you do a cloud overlapping it, because I do a cloud right here pretty much overlapping slightly, just a little line. There we go. And I'm just going to do a couple more clouds, maybe a little one down here. This is the bottom, I'm trying to keep them super small. And I'm just going to make more. So 
So a very little one here. Don't forget off page is very important. Very important so that there's life beyond the canvas and you didn't put all your clouds into that this one canvas. One coming off to the side. And you can just keep going. I'm going to make sure you go to the top because I want there to be lots of red. As I get towards the top, I'm going to wash off this brush and take um, actually more of like a plain red because when I get into the blue, I want it to not be mixing with the blue and making weird colors. I want it to make it look more purple. So that's why I'm just going to take plain red on its own. So I'm just going to take primary red and continue on with my clouds. This line right here is especially where I want to be hiding um, a lot of that line. So this is where I can get a little bit bigger. Excuse me. So see, they're just bigger versions. Well, it's a bigger version of all these clouds. So as I get upwards, I'm just getting bigger. So longer and just more fluffier. dabbing away nice and fluffy so now you can see it a little bit up like closer much bigger version of the cloud um, yeah you can definitely put these clouds wherever you want to this is just guidelines um, I'll actually not spend too much time on these just in case you guys don't want to do too many of them so I'm just doing the rest over here So when I put the red in here, it looks more purple and not like a brown color because orange or red orange on top of blue makes brown. Taking more red, just gonna do a couple more and then I'll probably stop. And I think this last one right here I'm doing is going to be about just, yeah, I think I'm going to stop there. I don't need to do too much more. I'm already going to have lots of more red leaves. And I'm just going to wash this off. done with this brush for now I'm gonna switch back well I'm gonna switch over to a larger one but it's 
I, this is a filbert. It's flat too. You can use a flat, large one that was square. Doesn't matter. I like the more flat ones because when you use it straight on, you get a nice thin line going across. So I uh, try to pick something more flat. So you want to put your horizon line, and I did that in black. So just a little bit of water on the brush and just lightly coat your brush with some black. So I just flatten it down on my palette. Basically, I just take my black and I just press down on each side to keep it flat and thin on the end. And now I'm just going to quickly do my horizon line as straight as possible. You can do it all the way across, so you can leave a gap for the sun in the middle. And for the top clouds, Terry, I just did plain red. I didn't mix anything with it, I just plain red. So I was just washing off this brush after I've done that. The more you go over your horizon line, the thicker it's gonna get, and if you don't want that, try to just leave it alone. Okay, so down here, just to do a little bit of a blend, because you can see it's just uh, one color to the next, go back to your blue and mix a little bit of red in there. So blue, put it over top of my red, take some red. And it's gonna, see how it's really dark? When you add a little bit of white to it, it makes it a bit of a lighter purple. You can see if you need to add a bit more red to blend these uh, blue and red colors together. So a little dip of water using the thin side of my brush, same one. And I'm going to go right in here, just over top, lightly brush it into some of this red, deep red color. You get a little bit, I like just a little bit of like a purple color um, it still looks really dark. It almost looks black, to be very honest. If you add more white or more red and white, you can get it a li little bit lighter. So um, to go back and blend that together a little bit, if you take, if you just take your red and a touch of white, I know like I said I didn't like pink, but it helps blend that purple in with the red. I know it's a, it's a little bit of a process so it doesn't look as choppy, but just start with like the purple because the purple already, it's really dark, but you want to with this red and white, it will just take that purple and streak on top and help blend it. It will still look more red and nice and deep down here. So a nice shadow because we have blue at the top, we wanted to make it look at a bit more shadowed and dark at the bottom. So that's basically red with some white, it's like a hot pink. Don't take too much white, otherwise it'll just be really pink. we go so it's a bit more blended and maybe you can see a little bit more of the purple uh, but again it makes a bit more of a shadow for the bottom part here
Okay, so I just washed off this brush, getting the excess water out of it. And before we start our birch trees, we want to make sure things are dry and we're going to fix this up. So that is plain white. Plain white on your, you can use your the same brush or if you want to switch, try it out first and see. I'm going to go right up to my horizon line and do a nice longer strokes for the reflection and then just start dragging it down. But getting smaller with the strokes as I go down. So not as long, basically. Just grabbing some more white. Go a little bit here, nice and streaky. And use, just see how I'm just doing shorter lines until it kind of disappears. And if you need to do a second coat on that, you can, because I'm doing my birch trees shaped around this. So this is something you can always do as a second. Oh, I got pink in there. So I'm just going to stop touching it. Thanks, Jazz. I'll come back to that later. Do a second coat when it's dry. It's a lot easier to do. We're going to put um, our birch trees through. Okay, so just kind of touch. Okay, so this is still wet. I can start on this side. Yeah. So I can start on this side because it's dry for one of my birch trees. And you're just going to take plain white to start. Plain white. And um, I'm actually going to take, you don't want contaminated white. So if you have some extra white, I'm just going to put this down. And the brush I will be using is the same filbert, or you could use a round like this. I'm using this one, taking white paint nicely coating it and I'm going to start from pretty much in this bottom area and just go all the way up but a little bit wobbly right to the top. Now you have an idea of where it is. So you can see it's not perfectly straight and that is awesome. You don't want it to, if it's perfectly straight, it doesn't look natural. And But you don't want it to have it like bending this way and that way, just slight curves here and there. So I'm going to press a lot harder on the bottom and then start turning my brush to a thinner side to get it, keep it nice and thin towards the top. You're not going to really see the top too much because there's going to be lots of leaves. Okay, so I'm just going to keep just expanding basically the bottom. Uh, try not to keep going over it and over it. Like I said, it picks up background colors and starts making it probably red because red tends to be picked up here. So there we go. Just a basic start to our birch tree and everything from a distance always looks a lot smaller. So take a step back and see if it's thick enough or if it's too thin. It's um, just up to you how, how you want it to look. Now to make branches, I can still use this brush. I can just take more white and branch off, make, like almost like making Y shapes. So right around here, I'll just branch it off and just slightly curve it. See how it's slightly curved off to the side. And Teresa, actually it is written in the, um, description of this, it's a just artist palette Durham on YouTube. 
So there we go. And then I'm going to do another one just coming out to the side here. Press very light. You can switch your brush to something smaller if you're not confident with your um, skills holding, if you're using a bigger brush like me. So I will also, I'm not gonna do too many branches. I'm just going to do a few and keep it pretty simple. And then maybe just a little one at the bottom here, just a short little one coming off to the side. You can barely see it because it's just white and we're going to uh, you know, add the texture on the tree So that's pretty much one birch tree. And I'm just going to do two more on this side because odd numbers are great to have in paintings. Otherwise, it's, um, I don't know, people just really like odd numbers in paintings. It's nice. So I'm going to do my next one here. Press a lot harder on the bottom, just make it thicker for the trunk. Um, sorry, yeah, Nancy, just, uh, hopefully you can hear me. I feel like I'm just talking really loud. And okay, so I'm just going over the base again, making it a bit thicker. You can have this one just generally bigger than the other ones, just so you have variety. And again, if you have to do a second coat with your white, don't do it while it's still wet. It'll just keep spreading your red paint. And I'm pretty sure it's the red that it spreads because red is very, um, it's got a lot of pigment in it, so it tends to pick it up. And this one I'm just going to have go across a bit. See, it's like making like a Y shape. Maybe a little one here. And some more just at the top. Little branches. And I'm just going to go over this spot so that it's a bit more white. Right up to the black. You know, doing second coats while you can. And drag it down just a little bit more. I'm going to do my last birch tree and then we're going to do uh, the grass before we do the texture on the tree so it dries just for a little bit longer. I'm going to go all the way down. It's going to be kind of on the side here. So pretty much on the edge of my canvas. If you pick up some red or any paint, just wash it off. And dry it off a little bit. Go back, take your white again. So putting it pretty close to the edge. The placement is nice, I think. It's not placed um, all evenly across and there's a nice gap for the, the sun and the reflection in the water. And 
And to do, again, the branches, I think I'll start right around here and just kind of have it come a little bit more straight up, almost like a wishbone. There. A little line here, maybe another one crossing over here. You can have fun with placing your branches anywhere. And maybe just a little one here. Thanks, Ainsley. So I'm just washing this off and we can start some grass. And hopefully we're doing well with the painting. It's not too hard, right? Maybe there was some, if it's mixing with colors, trying to blend them so they don't make weird colors, that could be a bit difficult. But other than that, not too bad. Um, Linda, uh, the step that I just did with the white, I didn't add any water. I don't think it's necessary. Lots of thick white paint makes it more opaque. Um, so you, whereas you add some water, yes, it helps spread it, but it also makes it thinner. Allison, thank you. Actually, I feel like you've painted with me on Zoom before. Okay, so while this is drying, like I said, if you have to do a second coat, wait for it to do that. For the grass, we're going to be making some nice greens. Now to make green, of course, is yellow and blue. So a big scoop of yellow, just a little dip of blue. See how green it is? I'm going to take um, a nice dark green to start. So you can see that nice and dark. I didn't, I just, no white added basically to the green. So what I'm going to do is make a line right at the bottom of my blue for where and just fill it in. Just fill it all in because I'll show you why. Grabbing some more. The reason you fill it in is so that you don't have to make all your grass and take forever to fill it in, like one grass stroke at a time, basically. And um, all you have to do from here is just do flicks all over the place, and it just looks like it's full of grass. Uh, branches on the middle tree, yes. In the middle tree, I do have a couple branches, see? one. Another one here, little one probably down here. So, did a couple of branches. And yeah, branches are a preference for all your trees. If you want to do lots for little, I'm going to keep it simple. So you can see I'm just flicking upwards from the bottom. And it gets it done super fast because you already have it filled. So that's just one coat of the green. And it already looks kind of grassy and has a bit of texture, but we're going to be adding more to it. We're going to be adding a little bit of a shadow and some highlight so it stands out a lot more. So I'm just going to make sure it's as tall as you want it to be. You can always extend a little bit so it takes up more of your bottom area, like the space down here. And that's good enough for me, so I'm going to stop. Thank you, Teresa. Oh, thanks, Sue. Um, after that green is done, we can start building on it, like I said. So to make it a bit darker, there's a couple things you can do. You can either add black to your green to make it darker, or you could just do, if you want to keep it colorful and nice and vibrant, you're just going to take plain blue. See, I'm just taking plain blue in my um, clean brush. 
So just plain blue. I know it looks really dark because it's, I mean, it is dark because there's no white added to it. So I'm just going to flick it. Uh, just leave the paint. Don't blend it at all. In fact, you don't want to blend it. That's what makes it look like it's not grass. <laughs> it won't look like grass. So I'm going to do lots of just little flicks and then just leave it, leave that grass strand alone. Don't keep trying to blend it or go over it. You can go a bit higher in some spots to make it look like there's certain grass strands taller than others. So I'm just leaving that. Maybe just take a couple more dark, just plain primary blue or phthalo blue. Doing some strokes in between. So you have some bluey green and also that other green we made that was um, just a regular blue and yellow green. Okay. Now to put a nice highlight, it's actually going to transform this bottom part. It still looks like grass, but... What makes it look like it has a lot more depth to it is taking yellow and some white. Thanks, Janeth. Yellow and white. So it's a nice bright yellow again. It was pretty much this yellow right here. I know it sounds kind of weird when you take just yellow and white, but when it's wet on the green and you take something like this, it brings up your green colors that you just put down there makes it a lot brighter and more lime yellowy green so it's a different color green and it has a nice highlight on it so just lightly do the same thing i was doing before and you'll see some more highlighted colors pop up see that you could switch to a smaller brush if this is not doing um, any good for you. I am still using a flat brush so I like the thin part of my brush and if you pick up too much of your of your green you can wash it off and just keep going with some light yellow so it can stand out a bit more. I like the high contrast and just adding some like basically taller grass strands here and there makes it look like it's more natural and in the wild and not freshly cut grass right so I'm going to leave that that's good enough for me it actually looks like there's a lot of grass and a lot of depth in there and we only did three colors You'll notice that my grass is not all going in the same direction. So try to make sure that you're doing them kind of in different directions a little bit, not all to the same side or up straight perfectly. And Sonim, um, well, it's probably a little late to tell you what brushes I'm using if you're watching from the beginning, but these sizes are not that big because this is only a 16 by 20 canvas. This is probably I'm not good with sizes for brushes because I've got these a long time ago. I think that this is actually a size, this detailed one is a size one. And so this would probably be a size four or five. And then these ones are probably like sizes 18, 16, 20 maybe. Okay. Now for the fun part on the trees, if you're ready for that, I'm going to be using, if you have a fan brush, you can use that. I'm going to show you how to make the details on the trees just by um, using a regular, you can use a filbert. I like the filberts. So I'm going to use this. And the, the key is to have it washed off and then just wipe off a lot of the excess water. You don't want it watery, trust me. It's going to be a dry brush technique. 
I like to use that technique a lot. What I do is I start with a bit of a light gray um, and then I just accent it with some more black so you have some dimension on there, not just black lines going through your birch trees and yeah, I just like to do it with a light gray first. So I'm going to take whatever what I can get here. Oops, okay, I'm just going to grab some more white. I don't want red in it, that's no good. Okay, I have some white on the side right here. And put that in with some black so it turns into a basic gray. So that's black and that's my gray. Um, can you use different colors of yellow? Yeah, for sure, Sue. You can use definitely. I actually have even bright yellow. This has already got white in it, um, but I did use my primary yellow. Bright yellow is good. And thanks, Patty. So I'm using my gray, and now what you're going to do is see how it's all coated? I'm just going to wipe it off. So now it's very much not as coated. There's very little paint. I'm just gonna flick it randomly. Press a bit harder than some spots and on your branches, just do little taps or little small flicks just to start. So you can get the start of some almost like a bark tearing coming off of the the tree, nice texture in it, make it look like it's got that birch tree look. So if you if it's not working very well, you have to wipe off more paint. You want it to be very, so you just wipe some off. You want it to be very subtle and not as thick. So it's um, just very inconsistent strokes. So I start with this, and then uh, don't forget your little branches. So start from the edge, just kind of flick it towards the other side. It's like you're just pulling away from the canvas kind of thing. Uh, and then what I do is I tone it down with some white as well. Just start with this first though. Just keep going. Wipe off the paint again, I grab some more. You can do some more on this side. Um, flick from the other side time to time, maybe in the middle. It's okay if you joined late. You can go back, you can rewatch this. I'm just grabbing a bit more white so it's not as contaminated with other colors. Just drying off my brush again and taking some white. So like I said, it's easy to tone down what you've done with the white because it adds another bit of texture, another layer of the, the bark on the tree. So you can see I'm just flicking and you can, if you did too much, like maybe you were like, I don't want to show this much. You just kind of put some white over top and see how you get lots of different grays in there, some darker than others. We haven't even done the black yet. The black will be the last touch to accent some of these um, bark, dark areas and the dark gray. So it'll have a nice variation in, in, the, in the different colors in the tree. So I'm just taking some white, doing the same technique. And it just, first of all, it makes it look more, uh, I think more realistic. Hello, Angela. Oh, you're not even talking to me, okay. I'm 
So again, this is just white going close by or slightly over top of some of my gray ones for extra depth and texture. And the trick is looking at it from a distance, up close, not the same. You see all your lines and strokes, but how you view it is from as if it's hanging on your wall. So I'm going back to my gray and you can see that there's not much of the those little lines that we made in the gray. I'm going to add a little bit more. Again, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to add very little paint. Well, we try to make them realistic, Angela. I'm glad that it does look realistic. Thanks, Sandy. That I'm glad that you enjoy this. So Again, I'm just going to be taking my gray again. You can go a little bit darker. It doesn't matter. Um, you can go lighter, darker, whatever you prefer. Just again, make sure there's hardly any paint in here so you can wipe some of it off. There's a lot more in your brush than you think. Just putting some accenting it again. All right, now I'm just gonna accent with black, that's fun. I'm gonna, nope, not, that's not the brush. I'm gonna take my um, smaller brush that, oh, it's right here, I dropped it. So I'm just taking my smaller brush to accent with some black. Wiping off again the paint. So no water is necessary. If I have black, I'm just going to wipe it off. You don't want it too much. And then you're just going to do little, smaller flicks. And you'll, you'll probably notice that it gets darker in the middle of your dark gray patches. It's like a nice little accent. And you can, you can outline like the side of your tree. That's the like opposite side of your sun. So you can put some little bit of an outline as a bit of a shadow there. So I'll do a little bit and you can see I've got a little bit of a shadow. Maybe just make a little bit smaller twig branch coming up from the side right here. But you can see the line following up for a nice bit of a shadow on the opposite side because my sun's here so it's darker on the opposite side. We're going full out here. We're almost done though. Taking more black, wiping it off on my napkin. Doing a bit of a outline. Okay, on this tree. Maybe just a touch of water, but again, very little paint. If it's not coming off on your brush, from your brush too well, you can add just a touch of water, but be careful. Okay, so the difference I think is a lot, well, you can see the difference a lot more than, whereas this one has no black, this one a lot more um, shadowing with the black to pop out your birch tree effect, like the, the bark on it, and it's nice.
And now I'm going to do my last one before we do the leaves. And again, I'm just going to do my shadow on the opposite side of where my sun is. Almost done. Some lovely birch trees. And you could keep going and going with adding more texture like I I could add just I could keep going here it's um it's hard to stop I'm just washing this off. And now I'm going to be doing the leaves, which is the final thing for the painting to complete it because you know it's pretty bare at the top. So the leaves are very simple too. The leaves are more red, lots of red, and some highlight of light orange, yellow color. Pretty much everything that we already have in our painting. So the red and the oranges are going to be in the leaves. I did more red. This is where you can switch to a more round brush because you can get more, if you press with it, you do a press like this, you just get more of a circular leaf. And I'm going to start with my red and some, just a little bit of yellow in it. So it sounds very familiar. We've done this color before. I'm just going to get some more red. Here's my red. Red and some yellow. Mostly red. And then we'll highlight it afterwards. So it's just like a nice deep red orange color. It looks very similar to the red I just used, but you'll see that it has more, again, more warmth into the color instead of just the red pinky color. So I'm just gonna, you, you gotta go nuts. <laughs> so I'm gonna just, see I'm just pressing, going over all the top here. I wanna make it look like it's nice and just full of leaves. And start meeting in the middle, but just less in the middle. And then again, more, a little bit on the sides here. You can overlap a lot. It makes it, again, look like a nice, complete look. Do a couple down up towards the bottom, a couple on this right here. There's a branch here, just a couple over there maybe a few on this one here so it's very textured you can see it's like got a lot of paint um, and i'm going to just keep going if you add uh, a little touch so if you add just a little smidge of white to it you can when you do it again it covers your background. The white acts like a medium and it will make it more opaque and you won't see the background. 
So that is usually a difference in a lot of paints if you're using um, thinner paints and you're, it's not, it's still showing the background, it's not as bright. It's probably because it's so thin, it's not as opaque. So I'm just going to keep doing the other side, but I do want that red with just some yellow without any white, just for a nice darkness as well. I like it. It's very leafy. It looks very like fall leaves. So again, I'm mostly filling the top. When you don't fill the top and you have a gap and there's just like nothing, it looks like you forgot to paint the top of your canvas and there's no leaves all of a sudden. So you want to make it look like it keeps going. Okay, so I feel like this might be good enough. That's good enough. And now I'm going to do a highlight. That's the last little step before you sign your painting. And if you enjoyed this, maybe you will paint with us again. You can give us a like. You can give us a recommendation. Um, follow us. We like support, especially for us to keep doing free events. Now the highlight is yellow and white um, because I pick up the color that's already uh, the red that we've already done in the background. So just again, you're going to mix that yellow and some white together. Start off right in the middle here would be highlighted because your sun's here. So it'll probably highlight more in the middle, right? And it's going to start picking up your color as you start going outwards. It's going to blend a bit more, which is exactly what I want. More on the sides where most of the sun would be hitting these leaves the complete look. And there we go. All done. All done for me at least. So thanks for joining everyone. Maybe I'll see you next time and show us your results. We love seeing them. Post them in the event page or uh, you can private message us on the link. And maybe I'll see you for another Facebook Live or a Zoom event. You can check us out on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. All right, I'll see you later.